Did you know that we have channel memberships now? If you'd like to help support this channel, get some exclusive Koobana emotes to use in the comments, as well as an exclusive badge by your name, click that join button now to find out more. Every bit of support really helps. Thanks guys. The life of Watanabe Kai was so bizarre and fascinating that it's a little odd that a drama about him hasn't been made yet. But then again, the events of his life were so strange that people might think them too outrageous and unbelievable, even for a drama. This is the strange story of an escaped prisoner who became a court judge, before becoming a prisoner yet again. Watanabe Kai was born in Edo on June 6th, 1859, to a samurai family from the Shimabara domain, now Nagasaki. He studied at the Commercial Law Training Institute, now Hitotsubashi University, and then returned to his family home of Nagasaki to work at Misui & Co, one of the largest trading companies in Japan. It was here, however, that Watanabe's life was about to take a change, and not for the better. Watanabe enjoyed the, well, finer things in life. He was a particularly big fan of indulging his carnal desires at brothels and wasn't opposed to stealing to get what he wanted to finance his nightly adventures. Watanabe was in charge of expenditures at Mitsui, meaning he had the company seal and access to its money. You can no doubt see where this is going. When he was just 21 years old, Watanabe borrowed the company seal and embezzled money to fund his nightly pursuits, stealing more than 460 yen of the company's money from right under their noses. It's uncertain exactly how he was caught, but he was, and he was sentenced in court in Nagasaki for theft by an employee at the age of 22. In contrast to today, where he likely would have received a much lighter sentence, Watanabe was sentenced to life in prison. But not just any prison. He was sent to Miike Penitentiary, a prison where prisoners were forced to mine coal deep under the earth's surface. Rather than spend the rest of his life doing literal slave labour, Watanabe figured he'd take his chances and try to escape. He teamed up with another prisoner, and on July 7th, 1881, only one month into his sentence, successfully broke out and went on the run. Reportedly, more than 1,000 prisoners were able to break free each year around this time, so security was clearly more lax than it is now. Either way, Watanabe was free, and he reportedly fled to Oita for the next year or so. It's here that things get interesting. Watanabe's father was reportedly a court official in Nagasaki before his son's arrest. It was obviously a bad look for him when his eldest son was convicted of theft from the company he worked for, and sentenced to a life sentence of hard labour. Reports are conflicting on what happened after his son's sentence, however. Some say that he quit. Others say he moved to Totori and took a job there instead. Either way, it appeared that he and his son were reunited after Watanabe's jailbreak, and in April 1883, his father did something quite interesting. He submitted a family register for his son to the mayor of Honjo Ward in Tokyo under the name Tsujimura Kurata. This was his uncle's childhood name. The men claimed that Tsujimura was a war orphan that Watanabe's father had raised himself. He was trying to have his son, under a pseudonym, officially added to the family again. With a new name, he wouldn't have the stigma of his previous crime and prison escape attached to him. He could start over anew. With the times being what they were, and Watanabe's father being such an influential person, the register was approved. Watanabe had, in essence, a second chance at life with a simple name change. Now, you might imagine a man who escaped prison would try to stay far away from anything that might send him right back there, but Watanabe didn't roll that way. On December 6th, 1883, Watanabe started working as an assistant to the courthouse clerk, and nobody uncovered his true identity for years. In 1887, 
Watanabe then passed the official examination required to become a judge. And on December 24th of that same year, he started work at the Nagasaki District Court as a probationary judge. The same place that had sentenced him only six years earlier. He reportedly called in sick on the day he was supposed to be introduced to everyone at the court, likely because he feared running into someone who was there for his sentencing only a few years prior. Instead, he spent the day at a Japanese inn, relaxing. Three years later, Watanabe was promoted to full judge, and by all accounts, things appeared to be going great. He got married and had a son, and was wealthy enough that he could have his father and younger brother come to live with him and his family as well. But behind the scenes, people were starting to suspect something strange was afoot. There were rumours that the new judge not only looked an awful lot like Watanabe, but acted an awful lot like him as well. Perhaps he was not some war orphan, but in fact really was Watanabe Kai, escaped and unaccounted for prisoner. In fact, someone was so sure that he was Watanabe that he went to the police and an investigation was opened in secret. After all, if an escaped prisoner was now working as a court judge, this was a big deal. After much investigating and surveillance, police became convinced that yes, this Tsujimura was in fact Watanabe. On February 18th, 1894, Watanabe's father and brother were arrested while he was away on business. The following day, Watanabe was then arrested at the inn he was staying at. In a moment of perhaps beautiful poetic justice, the prosecutor was the same prosecutor who had investigated and brought him down 13 years earlier. He reportedly sat down with Watanabe to deliver the surprising blow. Tsujimura-kun, surely you remember me. When I worked for the Nagasaki police 10 years ago, I investigated the case involving one Watanabe Kai embezzling money from Mitsui and Co. I'm sure you haven't forgotten. At first, Watanabe acted upset that the prosecutor would accuse him of such a horrifying crime, insisting that Watanabe was his older adoptive brother and nothing more. But it was no use. He was arrested and taken in for questioning, and finally, he admitted to everything. He was indeed Watanabe Kai, wanted criminal. On April 11th that same year, he was sentenced by the Nagasaki District Court once again, this time for forging official documents, the fake family register, and sent back to prison. The escaped prisoner became a judge in the same court that sentenced him, and then, after working there for a decade, was sent back to prison again. But that wasn't even the end of his bizarre story. There was still more to come. Watanabe appealed his sentence. According to him, he hadn't technically committed a crime here. Technically. The forged documents were officially approved, after all. So on a technical level, they were real. It was just the type of legal jargon needed to confuse the system. And surprisingly, it worked. On April 11th the following year, Watanabe was released after serving only a year of his sentence. He didn't try to escape this time. For whatever reason, he wasn't required to finish serving his original sentence, nor was he arrested for his escape either. Just like that, he was free. After his release, Watanabe opened a seal engraving business, wrote signboards, and worked as a picture framer as well. He lived the rest of his life in peace and died in Nagasaki in 1922, at the age of 63. Numerous plays have been written over the years depicting his life, and a novel, Bone of the Oni, was written by author Sao Tome Mitsugu in 1969 as well. Yet, for whatever reason, his story has never been turned into a movie or drama, despite how outrageous it is. Perhaps in the future we'll see a period drama about the son of a samurai who was sentenced to life in prison, escaped, became a judge in the same court that sentenced him, then ended up back in prison again, 
only to be freed on a technicality. When you put it like that, it sure does sound unbelievable, doesn't it? But what do you guys think about this one? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.